Growing up, I was definitely more so like the sports kind of guy. I really needed to stay moving. I'm like super ADHD and I, I just need to move. I think having like a pencil and paper or whatever it is, a paintbrush and like sitting still and like working on something as a kid was a very difficult thing for me. So it really manifested itself in, in like in a, in a physical way. I think I just knew abstraction was like my route. I need to just be able to create without any sort of idea. I don't want to set out blueprints. I don't want to, I just want to be able to step to the canvas and like paint. And I don't want it to be a huge thing. Like I want it to be like, like kind of like how I think of like skateboarding, you really grab your skateboard and you just step out your door and you push and you go. I grew up actually like, so I'm originally adopted. Um, I was born in Miami and then I was adopted by uh, two white parents um, in Vermont. So as you can imagine, not a lot of people of color there. And uh, so I think growing up, I had a lot of questions about where I was from, what's my purpose, this at the third and it really, it really just made me feel kind of alone, you know, just like I didn't feel like I could relate to many people. No one around me looked like me. I think I didn't understand myself. So a lot of people didn't understand me, you know, by virtue of that. So I met my best friend, Josh, like a few weeks into my freshman year and he is like you think of like the most dynamic talented artist you know like that's Josh he was like really my first like black friend and seeing him just completely own himself and so comfortable in his own skin and it was just so inspiring to me and it made me just really want to discover myself. I think, you know, you spent, spent the last 18 years just asking questions, trying to figure things out, really, and honestly, really just following other people and what they did and not necessarily doing what I wanted to do. I really didn't think I had a creative bone in my body, but I was very self-deprecating at that time too. I, I was very down on myself. I just wanted to find something that I could have that was mine. It was like, I could hold it and it was just, you know, I own this, this is mine, this is me. Just the pressing thing for me was like, what, what is your purpose? What are you supposed to be doing? Or like, even just get a hobby for yourself. You don't, you just seem to kind of bounce around and like, and not only that, but to get something that felt natural to me. So I actually took up photography initially, but I really wanted to be able to like manipulate the scene more than I could, but without like Adobe, you know, I wanted it to be like, like, like you jump off the roof so I can like hit you mid shot, you know, <laughs> like, you can't do that. And I had this like little manual for like headphones, like I think like little, little crappy Bluetooth like earbuds. And it was the only thing that I could see that like, I could draw on and I grabbed that and then I had a pen literally right next to me for whatever reason. And for some reason that was like an instinct. It wasn't like a conscious thing that I was doing. It was just an instinct. I grabbed the manual, grabbed my pen, the manual was like, and I made like the self portrait and that changed everything. Bought like a sketchbook, went to Central Park 
And then I, I made that like a routine. I think every single day I went to the Central Park and I just sketched, you know, for two to like six hours sometimes. I would just sit there. Because at this point I'm like, yo, you're at like your lowest point. What else are you going to do? This makes you happy. So you should just keep doing it. And if we like fast forward, I guess. I met my girlfriend in New York City in 2017, um, and she was a visual arts major in college. I just like an artist her whole entire life, extremely talented. So she got me some paints for Christmas, and just like I think I still have like some of the like this was part of the first set. I think it's like kind of broken now, but I just keep it because it's super significant. And once I actually got to Portland, I was painting the way I wanted to paint and I wasn't thinking about any technical aspects of it at all. I was just doing it. And that's what I ultimately I had been looking for all along and kind of just took off right there. And I think there's like, in life, like we can like, you can like sit there and try to think of answers or you can actively like pursue answers. And like, I think it's super important to, you can think about it. Thinking is great, you know, but you shouldn't just think without actually actively like going out and trying to, you know find that thing there needs to be an actual like, commitment towards it and commitment doesn't just come through thinking in the beginning painting for me was definitely working out a lot of demons just like from my childhood um just growing up and I hit a point where I think I like worked I think everything was so built all the demons were like so built up that I I was just letting them all out and it was like painting after painting after painting just letting these demons out and then it hit a point where I think I had they'll, they'll forever be demons you know but it, like I hit a point where it was like yo you just had your full session your full like six month session of therapy and now you're feeling good again you know and then I and I remember painting and not being able to tap into anything and just I found myself like really consciously painting and more so like trying to create something. I don't know what I thought I was trying to create, but just I was trying too hard, you know? I guess it's the best way I could put it. And it just didn't come out well, or it didn't come out the way I wanted it to, you know? And it didn't feel right. It felt like work. And the best art happens when you like can surrender to it. And meaning I think you're not, you're not, artificially pushing it you're not like super conscious of what you're doing and trying to get the little tiny nitty-gritty things you kind of just allow yours you turn your brain off and you allow yourself to go you're just in the experience i realize yo you can't paint without tapping into something first and you're n you might not even be able to tap into something for a session or two sessions or maybe even for a month straight you might not tap into a single thing it doesn't mean you shouldn't paint because you can't tap into it, you know? I think be aware maybe when to stop so you don't do too much and, like, completely dissatisfy yourself, you know? But, like, no matter what happens, if you know you really want to do something, you can't stop trying. No matter how in the hole you feel like you are, you're going to come back up. Guaranteed. I think that's just the world's way of, like, 
making sure you really want it, you know? And it's like, well, how much are you willing to give to, you know, to, to, to do this? And it's like, the world's like, I'll give this to you, but not without, you need to prove to me how badly you want it. And how much you work is how much I'm going to give back to you. 